Hello again, Michael Forster, the amazing attorney in D.C. How you doing, sir? I'm doing great. How are you, Cedric? Great, man. Thank you for asking and thank you for sharing your time again. I had a couple of questions come my way and I wanted to run them by you. I figured it'd be a good chance to, to get this going on video so that other people could benefit from the information. So I talk to people five to six days a week that are going through the probate process and not everybody has a home. Not everybody wants to sell a home, but of course my duty is still to help them out. Uh, what happens when people have a home that the family has after someone has transitioned, they passed away, and they want to keep that home, they do not want to sell it, but they're moving through the probate process. Like, how does that work? Yeah, um, that comes up often in my practice where there are some or all of the heirs who want to keep the house you know, for sentimental, financial, for personal reasons. Sometimes even they promised the person who died that they were going to keep it. Right. Um, and there are ways for that to happen. Um, the first thing that I always look at is, is there a mortgage on the property um, that the deceased person had taken out? And if there is, that needs to be dealt with. Um, so it would be somebody could refinance, get a, get a new mortgage and pay it off. It could be in some situations, you can actually assume the loan, which means you go through this process and uh, you can take over the loan that they had. Um, and that can be a good, especially today when interest rates have gone up, yeah. you know, then your you know, grandma might have gotten a better interest rate than you can get So today. So it's something to look into. There is a lot of paperwork involved and you'd have to qualify, um, but that is something. So if there's a mortgage that needs to be dealt with, like I said, in one of those ways, uh, probably. Um, and then the question is, you know, who's entitled to the home? Is it, is it just you? Is it you and some other people? Um, and do you all agree? If you all want to keep the house, then that's, you know, simpler. You can draft a deed and, and transfer it ownership to multiple owners. Um, or if someone, you know, oh, I want them to have it, then, you know, just that owner. Um, and that can, be, that, that, that can be pretty easily done by, you know, the, the, the attorney handling, you know, the probate attorney handling the estate. Um, so uh, if there's not agreement, that can be trickier. Then you have to figure out how to buy out that person. People, the person or people who don't want to keep the house. So then you usually need to appraise the property, figure out what everyone's share is, and come out with money to pay them. Um, if there are creditor claims of people are making, you know, if there are debts of the decedent and there's not money to pay for it, there's, if there's just a house and you got to figure out how you're going to pay those if you're not selling the house. So there are different things to work out, but it, it can be done, especially if the person who wants to keep it has access to financing to sort of handle these things. Mm. Access to financing. That is a key element here. Now, what about because this is something that happens way more than we know about because these conversations don't always come up and we don't always get the information until it's too late. What about if that home has a reverse mortgage on it? Yeah, there, yeah, no, I mean, reverse mortgages are trickier. Uh, you can't, you know, really assume it in the same way uh, if it's a reverse. Uh, it's also trickier in that if, if, if you kind of delay, they might file a foreclosure case to, to get paid. Um, so you might have to deal with that angle. You really, if there's a reverse mortgage, you probably just will be refinancing is probably the only way you can keep it uh, because they need to get paid and there's you know no way around that. Um, you know, so that, that, that situation makes it harder. I mean, reverse mortgages can be really useful to seniors who need money for whatever purpose. Um, but uh, they, you know, the, it makes it harder on the back end if someone wants to keep the house for sure. So if, if, if you're someone who wants to, your family to keep the, ho keep the house you're in, you know, maybe think twice about getting a reverse mortgage because it can be done, but it certainly adds complications. Yeah, you, you could be giving the home away in advance and, 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 you know, basically taking it away from your heirs 
if you're not really, really careful. And I imagine there are some minute details or maybe some protections that could be put in place with different types of uh, family planning, you know, estate documents, the kind of stuff that you work on, but still, you know, those those reverse mortgages are really, really tricky and sometimes predatory and dangerous. And I, I don't know about you. I mean, you talk to even more people in the senior community than I do, but I think that it's, it's probably a good idea for anyone considering a reverse, reverse mortgage to speak with an attorney separate from that, right? Separate from the loan officer and, and all of those things. What do you, what do you think? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they, they've certainly, the, the regulations have made it, made it harder to get a reverse mortgage and harder for them to prey on people who can't afford it. But at the same time, it's, it's a big commitment that you're making that you want to be sure about. Um, so yeah, I definitely would, would recommend that as well. Um, and if you're thinking about transitioning the house, you know, you might want to think about setting up a trust to pass it on without having to go through probate. Now, certainly if you had a reverse mortgage, you'd still have to deal with that, but um, it's, uh, you know, it's something to consider, you know, while you're alive about whether doing, doing a trust or something like that. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that it's something not to be entered into life. You know, there's going to be a lot of paperwork you're signing and it might be hard to understand what it all, what it all needs. Yeah, trust those kinds. Of, those were the, that's the kind of stuff I was alluding to. Okay, so real quick, back to something that you said earlier. There's a loan, or you know, something on the property, some type of financial instrument, money that's owed. Then you have to be able to refinance, qualify for the loan, assume the loan, so on and so forth. Now, these are individuals within a family. It's not always the perfect scenario, uh, particularly in you know unusual economic times like this. We saw a lot of people lose their jobs in 2020. What if there's family members that want to keep that house, but uh, they've been laid off or they are otherwise unemployed or they're on a fixed income or retire? What happens then? Well, if they, um, you know, if there's no mortgage, it's not an issue. Um, if they need to, ref I mean, they need to, somebody needs to come up with it come up with the financing to pay it off you know sometimes there are other assets i mean some people have two houses you know i had a state where they had two houses one had a mortgage and one didn't i mean you could sell and pay off the other or sometimes people have you know land in north carolina that they can sell um that comes up a lot um for my clients but uh, <laughs> specifically north carolina is definitely that's how you said it. <laughs> yes if I had a dollar every time my clients mentioned land in North Carolina, I, I would be able to buy land in North Carolina. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah, so but yeah, you, you need to you need to be able to, to pay it off. Now, it's possible if you're also a senior, I mean, maybe you could get a reverse mortgage of your own and pay it off. Uh, that would be I, mean, I don't know if I've seen that happen, but I, I suppose that's possible. Um, but yeah, you just, it has to be dealt with. And one thing I wanted to note um, is a lot of people think that they have to go to the same bank that they're, you know, oh, you know, grandpa taking out a loan with PNC and like I got to talk to PNC and yeah, you can talk to PNC and try to assume the loan, but you're not limited to PNC. It could be Wells Fargo. It could be your community bank. It could be anyone else. They'll just get the payoff and they can pay it off. So you don't, you're not tied to that institution. And that institution might take longer than a private lender that you find. They might be trickier to deal with. So I, this is constantly coming up where people are trying to work with the existing bank. I'm saying, you know, you can work with them, but you might have better results somewhere else. Or if you have, especially if you have a relationship, you have a relationship with your credit union, you know, go into there, so, you know, see if they can help you out. Yeah, no, that, that's a good point. Yeah. Okay. Well, this is a really good information here. And I still got to say, you know, even with all of these things that you've given up here, because I know that you and I have personally worked on cases where they were really time sensitive. Mortgages hasn't paid, mortgage hasn't been paid in X number of months. And it's some, you know, uh, one or two of those cases, foreclosure documents, there is, uh, you know, whatever date pending with the courts and things of that nature, you know, it gets really tricky, but 
maybe the people want to try to keep the house. So I'm going to say people should still probably reach out to you, even if they want to uh, keep the house and they're going through this kind of process. Um, yeah, definitely. I mean, even if there's a foreclosure case pending, you can still potentially keep it. Like, right. Until it's auctioned off, until someone else's title name's on it, you know, you there might be options. Um, so even just the case being filed, it doesn't mean that the house is gone. Um, so, you know, talk to an attorney, find out what your options are before it's too late. I mean, I can't say that enough if you really want to keep it. And a lot of people want to keep it. And I love helping people keep it in their family. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's an important thing. It's a, you know, that's to communities and families. And so they should, you know, I'm happy to help people however I can to, to accomplish that goal if that's what they want. If they want to sell it, I'm certainly happy to help with that too. And I'm not judging either way, whatever you want to do, it's your, it's your property, it's your family. So I'm um, just happy to help however they need it. Now, I, per I personally witness you save people from having these homes go into foreclosure. So I stand by what you just said. So how can they reach you, man? Cause you're the guy to talk to. Yeah, you can uh, go on my website, ForresterLawFirm.com, spelled F-O-R-S-T-E-R. You can call me, 202-400-2489, and set up an appointment. Uh, you can email me, Michael, at ForresterLawFirm.com. Um, any of those ways, you can find me. Excellent, excellent. As always, fantastic information, man. Thank you so much, and we'll talk to you next time. Thanks, Cedric. Have a good one.